Welcome back to Route Double. When we last left off, we we're just starting to learn more about uh, Watase and Wataru. We're in the process of restoring Watase's memories. We uh, witnessed uh, Watase's uh, passive but dangerous prejudice. Ah, so they. And we're uh, scolding Wataru for her reckless disregard for her own life. That's not tripping any death flags whatsoever. No. その。それにほら、私、あんたのお姉ちゃんだからさ。Watase just shook his head in exasperation when he saw Watase's beaming smile. まあ、そんな日が来ないことを祈ってるよ。そうだね。縁起でもないし。Twin smiled at each other. さ、すっかり体が冷えちまった。ランニングの続きをしようぜ。they said that and then started running back towards their home. The apartment they, the apartment they lived in came into view after they'd run for about two kilometers. What to say and Watu had been keeping up side by side, but Aha! Uh -huh. Watu suddenly dashed ahead as she said that. Watase then sped up in an attempt to catch up to her. Then a car suddenly sped down onto the street from a side road. Me? Eh? Wataru froze in shock. The driver slammed the brakes, but the car kept skidding towards Wataru without stopping. Things gonna run her over. Wataru's ba Watase's body sprung into action the moment that thought crossed his mind. Wataru! Watase dashed towards Wataru with the force of a speeding bullet and pushed her aside. A second later, he felt an impact run near his thighs. It Watase was sent flying by the car and soon crashed into the pavement. <sighs> Watase groaned as he laid face up in the street. His line of sight was completely filled with a beautiful orange sky. Watase! He heard Wataru crying out to him from somewhere. He then heard a car door opening, followed by the voice of the man who was apparently the driver. If it had been under any normal circumstances, Watase would have let out a sigh of exasperation at her cries. I ain't gonna die. It does hurt like hell. He didn't feel he was in any danger of dying. Though his leg hadn't hurt all that much at the moment of impact, it had suddenly started to seethe with intense pain. His mind was growing fuzzy. Perhaps he'd suffered a concussion. Huh. Was all that I'd save you in a heartbeat even if it cost me my life BS about? That was the one who ended up saving you. Some rescue. That was. As he thought all that, what has he lost consciousness? After having saved Watu from being run over by a car. By Ukita, probably. <laughs> at, le at least that voice sounded like Ukita. Watase was hospitalized with a broken right femur. Ukita just has a terrible fucking history of driving cars, apparently. Though he was grateful to have his own room, thanks to the large sum the driver had paid his reparations. It seemed that Watu had been more hurt by the incident than Watase. Watsu burst into tears when she came to visit Watase and saw the cast the hospital had set on his leg. Watase spoke with a wave of the hand. Damn lucky to only get away with a broken leg. Watu let out a heavy sigh. 
I say that knowing my dad broke his hip after getting hit by a car years, years ago. And that's infinitely worse. Well, I hesitate to say worse. So I've never actually known anyone who broke their leg. I have known someone who broke their hip, and that's a... Hell of a recovery. What if I spoke encouragingly to the totally dispirited Wataru? そう、しょげるなよ。and plus, we gotta, gotta kind of disregard the fucking Ukita who's driving way too fucking fast that he just fucking uh, driving way too fucking fast and his brakes are way too bad to the point where he uh And took out Watase. Watase gave his sister a faint smile when he saw the sudden look on her face. That's a spirit. That's a spirit.俺はそういうのが全然ないから、ちょっと羨ましいんだ。行動力もあって。だから、俺もお前と一緒に行動したら何か見つかるかなと思ってな。そんな、そんな風に思ってくれてたの。あ、ちょっとな。ふふふ。私なんかでも私に羨まれたりするんだ。What <笑> でも、私。その。Boy, he sure will. <laughs> I say with the utmost of irony. あんたは何でもできる子なんだよ。あれこれ考える前に動けば、きっとね。お前はもう少し考えて動いた方がいいけどな。そ、それはもう反省しました。<laughs> Watase sighed when he heard that. <laughs> Flashback to Watase's bind scene. It's fucking kill, 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 kill. He sure is gonna find something that he wants to do. <laughs> <laughs>なんだよ。見舞いに来てくれる彼女のいない私を気遣ってやってんじゃん。なんだと？お前こそ早く彼氏作れって。The twins then shared a laugh. Two of them chatted for a while longer, then the time came for Wataru to leave. じゃあ、今日はひとまず帰ろうかな。あ、親父たちによろしくな。うん。そんじゃまたね、私。Wataru then turned to leave the room. She looked so lonely from behind that Watase called out to her one more time. Wataru. What? Wataru smiled brightly at that suggestion. Wataru finally left the room with those words. Oh. And thus Watase's peaceful family life at the hospital went on for a while after that. 
was a fairly simple life where he just spent his time either attending to people who came to visit him, or just eating, reading, and sleeping when alone. But one night, eight days after Wataru had come to visit him, something unexpected happened. <laughs> Wataru had woken up from a bizarre dream he'd had that night. What was that all about? The dream he'd been in a town in some foreign country. He'd been desperately running from his life from the flames that were engulfing the town. No matter how hard he ran, the flames just kept on chasing him. Watase was soon surrounded by flames and smoke that filled the air around him. What a horrible dream. Why was I in a foreign country? Watase tried to go back to sleep as he vaguely wondered that. At that moment, his nose caught the stench of what it sounded like something burning. It sounded smelled. Hmm? Am I dreaming again? No! Watase suddenly sat right up. He wasn't dreaming, but then that stench of smoke was clearly all too real. What's more, the sound of the fire alarm was echoing around him like crazy! Robotic announcement explained the situation in a detached voice! Wallace felt himself shaking like crazy at those words. M at the cast around his leg, Wallace couldn't move at all. That meant that when the fire reached his room, I'm gonna die. Oh shit! I gotta get out of here. Wallace dragged his left leg and crept out of his bed. His room was on the seventh floor. He couldn't escape through the windows. When he opened the door to his room, oh, the hallway was already consumed in flames. Wase frantically shut the door. He had no chance of weaving his way through the flames with the condition his leg was in. The nurse or someone doesn't get here before the fire door, his fire does, then I'm <laughs> But no one came by, no matter how much he yelled. The nurse call button wasn't responding either. Perhaps the doctors and nurses had abandoned Wase and the other patients had earned and had already evacuated. Perhaps the fire kind of took them out first. It wasn't long before smoke began seeping in from around the edges of the door. The shut door. <coughs> what as I coughed violently. Uh-oh. He frantically opened the window, but the smoke was filling the room faster than it could escape in. It only grew thicker as time continued to pass. Just then, what as I thought he heard something burst open. The fire had probably already reached the room. I am in deep shit here. If things stay the same, then in just a few minutes I'll be dead. Fear of death gradually weighed down on Watase's mind. <laughs> he tried calling for help, but he couldn't speak anymore. No other idea of what to do. Watase was about to break the window and jump out when. There! <laughs> eh? He heard her voice. He turned around in shock to see Watase open the door and run into the room. <laughs> There wasn't any time to think. Watase grabbed onto Wataru's shoulder and left his room. The hallway was already wrapped up by the flames. The twins weaved their way through them and ran away. The staircase was completely blocked by flames. What if they and Wataru were stuck on the fourth floor? <laughs> this looks familiar. Wataru broke into a violent coughing fit. She'd probably exhausted her stamina while dragging Watase through the fire. If this keeps up, then Wataru will die too. All because of me. Once he realized that, Watase forced himself to speak. Wataru, <laughs> A light sparked in Watase's eyes when she heard Watase mutter that. Watase shouted and tightened her grip around Watase's arm. 
and broke off into a mad dash. They soon discovered an emergency staircase that was undamaged by the fire. They ran down it and soon found the exit to the hospital coming into view. It was only a hair's breadth away. They hadn't noticed earlier, but now they could hear a fire truck's sirens closing in, too. We're saved! He then tried to move towards the exit with Watu as he thought that. Only to hear the unpleasant sound of something creaking above them. Oh, fuck. He looked up in surprise to see cracks forming in the ceiling. Oh, God! Cracks spread wider in an instant, causing the concrete ceiling to bend swiftly. Hurry! It's crumbling down. As soon as Watu thought that... Watu pushed him towards the exit. Oh, God! Watase fell on the ground outside the hospital. What he saw before was a perfect starry sky. What he heard was... The roar of something collapsing. Huh? Watase looked into the hospital from the, ex from the exit. Oh. This really puts the, uh, the Area 6 scene into a whole new perspective. Saving someone who was about to be trapped under a collapsing ceiling. Where Watu had been standing moments ago was now a burning pile of debris. Wataru. No response. Wataru. No response. Wataru. Watase screamed and limped over to the mountain of debris. Before long, a response appeared. In the form of a stream of blood flowing out from under the debris. Oh! Watase began randomly moving debris as he rambled incoherently in a hollow voice. The debris was lit with flames, not enough to, hot enough to burn anyone who touched it. But Watase ignored the pain and kept picking up debris and tossing it aside. He soon heard a voice from behind. It was probably a firefighter. Watase ignored them and kept working on his attempts to rescue Watase. What are you doing? The firefighter ran over to Watase after noticing something was clearly wrong with the boy. The firefighter grabbed Watase by the shoulder. Watase shook off his hand and shouted, Watase's deranged screams echoed through the night sky. Watase was restrained shortly afterwards. The firefighters managed to pull Watase from uh, out from under the rubble. By that point, she had long since breathed her last. Great Okume City Arson. That was what the events of the night would come to be called. We heard about this, didn't we? September 16th, 2014. Fires broke out all at the same time at 15 different spots in Rokume City. Starting with the Rokume City Hospital, various buildings such as civilian residences, public facilities, multi-tenant buildings, even the apartment building where Watase's family lived were indiscriminately set fire to, were burned down in that one single night. Fuck, that all that's what also killed Kazumi's sister too, and injured Jun. 118 casualties, 236 injured. Among the casualties were not only Wantudo, but Wanase's parents as well. Oh, Jesus! The culprit was soon caught. He heard the crime was committed by an extremist group. It was said that the arson had been committed as a demonstration against the rapidly growing communicator population. Naturally, this leads Wanase to join them. But Wanase didn't care about any of that. He just couldn't come to grips with the fact that he had lost everything in a single night. Two months had passed. Watase st stood still in front of the ruins of the burned down hospital. This is where Watu. Though he thought that, he no longer had any tears to shed. 
but the cast around his leg had already been removed. His emotional scars hadn't healed. She didn't even get to say anything to each other when she left. Why did she give up her life for someone like me? Paint him that he alone had lived while the rest of his family had died. Simply living felt like agony to him. Watley lived for her dreams and things she wanted to do. So why is it that someone with no hopes for the future like me survived instead of her? And asking himself that question endlessly for the last two months, he'd thought he might be able to find an answer if he came to this place, but naturally he didn't. Tell me, Watley, what am I supposed to do now? And when that thought crossed his mind, his cell phone suddenly rang. As he slowly picked up the phone, a familiar voice came across the other line. <laughs> After the great arson, the victims of the fire had been given all sorts of accommodations by the city's public welfare division. They had covered Wadase's transfer to another hospital and other such procedures while he was still recovering from his broken leg. They were on the phone with his sponsor in the Public Welfare Division. Whilst I replied indifferently to the worker's pensive voice, after a brief silence, the worker continued in a quiet voice. As soon as Watase heard that, Watase's words were played in his mind. But when he remembered those words, Watase's mouth instinctively began moving. That was that was the only thing. That was the only way he could ever even hope to repay Watu for saving his life. I'll fulfill Watu's dream. That was the moment when he decided on his path in life. Whoa. With Watu's death as the trigger, Watase decided to become a rescue worker. A long time had passed since that day. Much like before, Natsuhiko could instinctively tell how much time had passed as if they were his own memories. Ah, so it's been seven years since then. The thing he saw was memory of nine years ago when Watase was twenty-three years old. Watase was training his body that morning, just like he did every other day. The sound of him counting his push-ups echoed through the dim room. His breath was calm and orderly, with not a single bit of exhaustion to be found. What as he stopped once he'd counted to two hundred? What as he stood alone in his room, not a bead of sweat on his face? He was living in a small apartment that the city had provided with him with after he'd lost his only family home. He'd been living there for almost seven years. The same apartment he'd lived in through the time he finished up, finished up with high school and then moved on to firefighting school. In those seven years, Rokumi City had transformed into a massive research city that revolved around BC research and nuclear power, to the point where it became a government-designated top-secret city. But Watase had no time to feel uncomfortable about the rapid changes happening in the city, much less feel any loneliness. He lived only to fulfill his sister's dreams. He had remodeled his body and temp tempered his soul to do so, and passed the notoriously difficult rescue worker exam with top marks. A rescue squad was finally established at the Rokumi City Fire Department at almost the exact same time, and so he enlisted in it. That moment the 2 p.m. alarm rang on his watch. It's almost time for him to go to work. Going to Watase's rotation schedule, he started work at 4 p.m. 
What if they had a personal rule about always showing up to work early? One who spoke was no longer the lazy boy who had no purpose in life. Husky worker with a body and will of iron left his apartment and headed straight for work. He arrived at the fire station. The building he'd once seen with his sister was now Wadase's workplace. He'd figured he'd get used to it a long time ago. He still found himself remembering that day from time to time. What is his heart throbbed painfully at the memory of her voice? If he wanted, he was the one who's really working here, not me. He couldn't exactly keep himself from feeling any hatred for the culprit. It was much healthier for him to live for the dead than to live by hating others. Which is what as he stood thinking to himself. Near piercing siren suddenly interrupted his thoughts. Dispatch. He instantly set his thoughts aside as he focused his mind and honed his senses. His co workers and the guys on the night shift rapidly dispersed out of the station. Commander noticed Wadase and called out to him from afar. Wadase jumped onto the fire truck as soon as he heard that. Listen to the radio report inside the truck as he changed into his uniform. Oh. Truck arrived at the scene just as the radio transmission ended. <laughs> Thick clouds of black smoke rose from the now burning apartment complex. Commander swiftly gave out orders to the squad members. Rescue workers then proceeded to run into the apartment complex. What I say in his partner Dojima went around checking all the rooms on the sixth floor. There were many doors they couldn't open, like due to the explosion. They just broke down those doors, saved all the people inside, and continued their rescue efforts in the show of supreme skill. Just when they finished checking all the rooms, the walkway began to slam. <laughs> Jima shouted that to him from behind. They'd already completed evacuating the floor. Evacuating. They've already completely evacuated the floor they'd been assigned to, so they were positive they hadn't left anyone behind. As so Wadase and Dojima started fleeing, a voice called out. <laughs> oh. Wadase stopped dead in his tracks. <laughs> Didn't know where it was coming from, but he heard it again. It was feeble, it only came out in fragments, but it was definitely the voice of someone seeking help. Maybe the third floor. Did they not search all the rooms down there? Wadase and Nojima proceeded to rush down the stairs. They encountered a woman who lived there on the way and forced her to evacuate, then headed for apartment 303. They kicked down the warped door and found themselves in a room whose ceiling had collapsed. Flames flickered in that dim space. Where's the survivor? Wadase looked all around the room and spotted a girl lying trapped under burning debris. Hmm? Wadase's heart leapt at the sight of the girl. As the sight of that girl momentarily overlapped with Wataru's death in his mind. Wataru ran over to the girl and pulled her out of the rubble. The girl moaned in pain. She was apparently barely conscious from the lack of oxygen, but she was indeed still alive. Ojima's voice suddenly called out to him. Oh shit. The survivors were two girls. Wataru and Ojima each took one of the girls and ran out of the room. Oh! 
But as they walked through the creaking hallway as he carried the girl he found. Hi, June! Dojima, Dojima was a short distance behind him, carrying the other girl. The girl Wadisi was holding soon broke out into a pain coughing fit. Oh, so that means that one of these girls is a communicator. One of these girls is a communicator. And the other one is Jude. I don't think the tele I don't think that telepathy voice was Jun's. This is how Jun got her scar, though. I want to answer her cheerful question in a clear voice. Yeah, what as I said that, as if to convince himself of that. Yeah, isn't that right, Watu? Rescue worker's job is to protect others' futures. There's no way in hell I can let this little girl die. What as he walked down the hallway as he thought that, all while carrying that small life on his back. Wadase and Dojima soon safely escaped the apartment building and successfully res rescued the girls. They were both badly hurt, but appeared their lives were most likely not in any danger. The girls were put into an ambulance and taken away to the hospital. Hmm. Wadase watched the ambulance drive off. If this is... Cosme's sister... It looked like she survived. Hey, were you watching me? You protected those girls' futures. Do you think? I've matured a little since those days. What as I felt like you could hear a nostalgic voice when he thought that. Hmm? Hmm? It's probably just a figment of his imagination. What as he looked up to the heavens and gave that voice a smile. And then, another long period of time passed from when Watase had saved those girls. This one's eight years after that dispatch, huh? Watase's life as a rescue worker continued after that day. He'd been on more dispatches than he could count and had saved many lives. It was by no means an easy life, but it was one he eventually got used to. Now in his early thirties, he was a man of an extremely sound mind that had no disturbances in his life. Day of Wrath, oh no. It was a warm day. Watase finished his shift and took a walk around the city at dusk with his mind at total peace. There have been a lot of peaceful days like this recently with no dispatches. Hmm, why do I feel a bit unsatisfied? I mean, I never would have dreamed that there would ever be days like this back then. His job and co-workers had supported him all the way. Among those co-workers, there were two of them who had similar backgrounds as Watase. They were Seiji Dojima and Kazuki Hiyama. Uh-oh. Much like him, they had also lost family and loved ones in the great arson and had been brought up in the city. They had all become rescue workers for similar motives and were all close in age, so the three of them got along very well. He had been blessed with co-workers whom he could pour his heart out to, a job that, he was, that was worth doing. On top of that, a subordinate who loved him dearly. It's going to turn out that it's Dojima and Hiyama who radicalized Watase, isn't it? Just the feeling in my head. He'd often been thinking recently that his life wasn't so bad after all. Just as he returned to his apartment and finished changing, his PDA rang. Display read, caller unknown. Watase hesitated for a moment and picked up the phone. He heard a man's voice on the other end. His voice sounded somewhat mechanical, like it was being filtered through a voice changer.
Man started talking dispassionately, just as Watase was ready to fully write this off as a prank. Shivers ran down what is a spine. We didn't know if we didn't know for what reason his caller would run a background check on him. Nanda Anta Stokaka お、<笑> What is he gasped? Here's the hard sell for the cult. With those last words, the caller hung up. There was no response from his PDA, no matter how much he yelled at it. What as he stood in a daze for a while in his apartment? Run to the old Rokume City Hospital. What truth is he talking about? His desire to know the truth and his desire to keep on living in contentment were at odds in his mind. Watase eventually made his decision, dashing out of his apartment. Oh great. It had been 15 years since he, since he had last visited this place. The place where Watase had lost her life and have, had, had apparently been left the way it was for all those years. Probably because it was such a big hospital that demolishing it would cost a sum that no man was willing to pay. There was no sign of anyone in the ruined hospital. Watase's shout simply echoed. Simply, ec simply echoed meaninglessly through the halls. Overcome with both irri irritation and relief, Watase was about to leave the ruins when he spotted something shining on the ground by the entrance. Mm. The hell's that? Hmm? It was a PDA. Took a close look at it to find the words "call" and "progress" were displayed on its screen. What as he picked up the PDA, a sense of unease weighing on its mind. When he did, he heard the voice of the man who'd called him earlier coming from the speakers. Yeah. <laughs> Man started talking in a meek voice. I have a feeling I don't. I'm not gonna like what this is going. What does he know about that, too? Most of the information concerning the trials related to the incident had not been made public. The country in Rokume City had been hounded by the media, but they hadn't gotten much information out of them apart from the incident was caused by an extremist group. <laughs> And that group was actually us, and we did it, so... 
無効感の発生や社会的不安が起こるのを抑えるためにあるまあ、辻褄は合っているならわかりやすいし何が言いたい真実は逆だと思いますか検挙された過激派団体はスケートボードにするあれはある一人のコミュニケーターによって起こされた事件だ What does he doubt what he heard? 一人のコミュニケーターが起こしただとバカ言えどうやって一人で市内の15箇所に同時に放火するって言うんだそれは可能なのさ Is it? 原因となったのは桁外れの力を持つコミュニケーターだったからな何そいつはコミュニケーター A Man began explaining the details about this communicator in a subdued voice A の本名はアリス・アンフラメ今から15年前にフランスからこの六名所に渡ってきたコミュニケーターだ Sorry, what? 当時六名所は国内外からコミュニケーターの認知を行っていた国交したばかりの PC 研究を進めるためにさまざまな実験、研究の対象となる人材が必要だったんだ That's a very believable line Mercury City had indeed been doing that just all th- been doing just that all those years ago. So, the first time you were to do that, it was a very good session. You have to do that. The same with this one, you can do it. It was a good session. You can do it. 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 超神経は A を非検体としてテレパシーやエンパシーの発生原理について解明したまた A も各種の実験を通じ己の BC 能力を開発強化するテレパシーとエンパシーを自在に使いこなせるようになり効果範囲も広がりその力は再現なく強くなったでもそれだけなら何の問題もない問題は A が強力なコミュニケーターであると同時に最悪の犯罪者だったと言うと。The man said that a floral scent drifted through the air from somewhere. Huh? Screening the PDA that didn't change. これは What? It appeared to be a magazine article written in a foreign language. Gee, that looks familiar. There were two pictures there, one of a burning building and the other one of a beautiful woman. What does it feel like he had seen her somewhere before? Huh? I've heard that story somewhere before. Once they thought about it and then remembered. Watsu had told him back, had told him about it back when she was still alive. When they were talking, Watsu had seen a blonde woman in the PRC. No way. It's that woman, Communicator A. I mean, it was fuzzy because it happened so long ago, but he had a feeling he was right. The time frame matched up and everything. The man continued as Watase frowned. So, I don't know. 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 This is what the full story looked like for reference. The thing is, there's been BC related incidents happening from time to time in other countries. For example, there have been cases of people in England and France burning down communicators' homes. Horrible incidents like that. You shouldn't be? So, ordinary people afraid of psychics attack the psychics themselves. That's like something out of a sci fi novel. Ah, yes, the lost fourth BC ability pyromancy. <laughs> その真の危険性も認識せずに
何が危険だって言うんだ知らない妊娠、セレパシーはただ遠くの人間に声を届ける能力感情をも他人に伝えることができるつまり強力な DC は他人の思考をも変えかねないというのだ<笑>悪意を見せた彼女の思考が周囲の無差別に垂れ流されたらどうなるその思考に反応し人々の心の中の悪意が刺激されるまるでウイルスのように彼女が抱えた悪意が周囲のあらゆる人に伝染していくこれがどれだけ危険なことであるか Wesley was rendered speechless. He just silently continued to listen to the man. Ah, yes, in some way. And it just so happened to be. And there just so happened to be a lot of arsonists in a whole bunch of different places. Man declared all that in a clear voice. Can't be. Once he noticed that his hands had started ache shaking. He's saying a single woman became the trigger behind the incident. The story was sudden and difficult to believe. The man spoke in an unwaveringly serious voice, leaving no room for doubt. Hmm. We've got that static effect meaning that something's changing. What does he remain silent if the man continued? <laughs> どうしてラボにラボは原子力研究所だろなんでコミュニケーターがそんなところに移送されていやラボは原子力研究所なのではない BC の研究所なのだよバカなそんな話聞いたこともないカモンさんはこの町最大の秘密だだがおかしいと思ったことはないか新規の原子炉を建造するには超えなければならない様々なハードルがある厳しい建設基準のクリア法的な問題市議会への根回しそれらをスピーディーに解決しラボの建設はなされたなぜそのハードルを軽々と超えてラボは建設されたか答えはラボ本当は原子炉など抱えていないか原子力研究所ではなく Common sense, what Wadase had thought to be true up until this point was gradually being rewritten. The man waited a moment for Wadase to respond, then continued. As you'd expect. What does he remember the turmoil of that time? What does he have been 18 years old at the time, but he had, as he had just enrolled in firefighting school, he hadn't had much of a reaction to all the fuss other than, well, this, the city's gotta do what it's gotta do. そして原子力研究の危険性と機密性を
白いたちをラボから遠ざけることに成功したんだじゃあ六名士の連中は人々の反発感情さえも利用したのかそれは人間として許されないことだろうラボの連中にとってはそれはさまつなことさ研究のためにより良い方法をとるそれだけが彼らの行動規範だそんなとあれそうしてラボは完成したしかもただの研究施設ではない例のような危険なコミュニケーターを誘拐するための施設でもあるラボの地下深くには居住区などがあるそこに A は閉じ込められたのだよ So I have two thoughts about th this revelation, and I'll get to both of them after the tips. Mate, A was, who did s a b a k a r e n a k a t a n o k a Naze so m a d e s t e l o k m e s h a A or k a k m a t a n d a Kimatirza, l o k m e s h a s o r t e c h i k e n o k o s t a A, now m o k i n k u z a i o n i s i o t o s t a k a c h i k e n o s i n s o g a a r i n a a l o k m e s h a c h o s h i n k e n o s i k i n i m o t o s a だったら事件を丸ごと闇に葬り別の場所でまた研究を進めればいいロクメイシの連中はそう考えたその日からコミュニケーター A を危険体 A と呼ばれるようになり名もないで DC 能力の研究開発に参加した一方役目を終えた長身権は完全ダミー施設だった名もないで密かに行われた DC 研究の成果は長身権を通じて発表されたそうすれば誰もラボが DC 研究所だなんて思わないこうしてラボも長身権もどちらも支援施設だ元をたどれば全てはロックメイシの参加にあり緊密に Oh, oh sorry, sorry, n o s e buttons Once he thought things over as calmly as possible despite the agitation causing his insides to tremble wanted to make sure there weren't any inconsistencies in what the man was saying Yeah 待て普通に考えてそこまでするか当事者たちは誰もその流れを止めようとしなかったのかしなかったんだよ当時六名士は DC 研究に力を入れようとした矢先だったからね君も覚えていると思うが当時の日本は経済的産業的に行き詰まりを見せてそこに現れた DC という新技術その可能性にかけた六名士の連中はあらゆる障害を排してでも DC の技術開発を推し進めようとしたんだ何のメリットがあってあらゆる先進的技術は巨万の富を生み出す可能性があるからさまして DC という技術は世界中の誰もが手をつけていない正真正銘の新技術日本が世界に先んじて研究を進めればその分野のトップに立てる精神医学の分野でも応用できるしエンパシーに至っては利用価値を計り知る産業、政治、軍事といったあらゆる分野での重宝活動を Psychiatry? OK That's also true So we are getting the pick <clears throat> I know this is the guy who's going to.、Uh, this is. I know this is QA non, but god damn it. Of course. Of course, in this game, there would be actual government conspiracy. Ah. <sighs> Sorry for grumbling, I just hate that. Living in the world that we do now, we, I, I have to accept the fact that the terrorists are actually. actually have a government conspiracy that seems to actually have happened. That's this. so deflating being an American in 2020, 2021. Having that be a thing. 
It, it, nothing against the game. Nothing against the game, but it's just having that be a thing I have to invest in now. When we have actual crackpots IRL, having to deal with the fact that there wasn't a grand conspiracy that came to fruition January twentieth. Or some of them that are whoa, too far gone. Who think that the conspiracy is still... That it's still ongoing. It could happen any day now. And then, it's just fucking... <sighs> it just... Tires me out. <laughs> I'm gonna break here. It just... I have to... I have to... I need a break to separate real life from Rokume City and come back, dive into Rokume City and get into the conspiracy on the government side and this shitty terrorist about to fuck some shit up. <sighs> Let's read some tips. Let's read about Watfu and get more sad. Watfu's elder, eldest tw elder twin sister, deceased, age 16 at time of death. Girl who valued life and lived her own life actively and positively. Thus she deemed saving lives to be the highest form of righteousness and aspired to be a rescue worker. However, her young life came to an abrupt end after she saved Watasafe during the Great Rokume City arson. Her proactive mindset and way of life had a huge impact on Watasafe and was the biggest driving force in making him abandon his inactive lifestyle to become a rescue worker. And the crime victim support laws. Sets the regulations for local self governing bodies with a multifaceted support of crime victims, including monetary compensation and livelihood support. First such law enacted is said to be the 1972 Warabi Disaster Compensation and Condolence Fund law in Saitama. Such laws in Rokumi City allowed for many bereaved families to receive aid after the violence of anti BC League members triggered by the great Rokumi City arson. Oh, God. Oh fuck. Sometimes I just instinctively... Instinctively my hands do shit with the mouse and then I just go, oh fuck, fuck, fuck. Such laws in Orkame City allowed for many bereaved families to receive aid the, after the violence of anti-BC BC League members triggered, ever, triggered after the violence of anti-BC League members triggered the Great Orkame City arson. These laws also allowed the orphan wanted to graduate high school and pursue a career as a rescue worker with his large sum of compensation money going to, to living expenses and tuition. Now my... my hope. And I have a feeling what's going to get me through this is knowing that even if the terrorists have a government government conspiracy to believe in. It seems like there is one to uh, study BC despite the despite the risk, with the potential applications of uh, empathy being used for sp spying, espionage, and corporate corporate. Oh, crap. They're still terrorists. And they still go around enacting violence against all communicators. Despite seemingly the leader understanding that an S-class, -S S-rank communicator developed this their powers to the point where they might have caused the Rokume City Great Rokume City Arson. So naturally, they extend their uh, terroristic activities against uh, and again. I had an argument the terrorist gun went too far, but... Uh, 
please someone tell me in the comments. Oh, I don't like having to simp- having to... I don't like- no, I- Okay, let's go back to the premise of one girl being responsible for the great Rokumi City arson. And... Uh, one girl causing the great Rokumi City arson. With, uh... This fucking QAnon dude saying it was her malice who caused it. I would or I, I have a feeling we're gonna learn about her time at the PRC and Labo eventually. And we're gonna get a clear picture into how fortunate Yuri was that she had Miyoko looking out for her. That That's my theory right now, is that by learning about the story of this uh, Sanamiya alt, we're going to learn about just what exactly Miyoko Tenkawa saved Yuri from by essentially being her guardian in Labo. And that's going to paint the picture of Labo that we pretty much knew was going to happen down the line. Don't get me wrong. We knew that this tone of Labo was going to come out down the line. Just at the time hearing Yuri's side of the story, we didn't really get much of that. That's my theory. We're going to get the true nature story of how Labo treats the rest of their S rank, rank S communicators, test subjects when they don't have a guardian on the staff going to bed for them. And that's my theory, is that if this Senemia alt character did in fact cause it, one, it was an accident with her emotions going out of control when she escaped from them, and she was treated horrendously. That's my theory. And it having escaped from the PRC, she just kind of lost control of her emotions and started sending feelings of terror and uh... and even what is even what to say had a weird dream about uh, burning up in a foreign country that could very well be what a dream that she inadvertently sent him god maybe you know what maybe that's what actually inspired people to burn shit. Like, her traumatic memories of her village being burned down by... Her traumatic memories of her village being burned down by people out to witch hunt her. And then, of course, naturally, the anti-BC folks took it and spun it as being her who burnt down her own village, naturally, because right-wing right -wing logic be like, you know, doing tying themselves into a mental pretzel covering every possible explanation of why they are in fact the victims and 
people they want to persecute are in fact evil and deserve to be persecuted. That's right-wing logic for you. Okay. I've given myself enough confidence that the terrorists are in fact spitting some of the facts to fan their own prejudices. I feel a little bit better about that. I can hate both the terrorists and the government in peace now. So that's my theory about what's to come. Let me know what you think. Try not to roast me too hard for being wrong. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying here. Ah. <sighs> Just tiring having to exist. Tiring having to exist in the same country as people doing, twisting themselves into mental pretzels to confirm their own biases. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Have a good night, or day, or afternoon. Till next time. Until then.